Remember this jar? A couple of weeks back when we talked about mental accounting and budgeting, we had talked about the idea that people put cash in jars like this one in order to put a constraint on how much they spend. Now, let me try a different example using the same jar. This is my entertainment budget, and it's got a bunch of coins. That's all it has. But looking at the jar, could you guess how many coins there are in this jar? Simple question. Now, there are many ways in which you could actually try and answer this question. You could pick up the jar, you could rattle it to get a sense of how many coins there are, or you could visually try and see how many there are in the front and then multiply that by five or six because that's a good thumb rule for thinking through. Or you could multiply the height of the coins through some process where you have a, a judgment for how many coins there are at each level. There are many ways in which you could go across making this judgment. But you could also ask an expert, or you could ask somebody else to give you their estimate. Now, let me tell you the answer. There are 40 coins in this jar. But let's imagine that you asked two people how many coins there were, and let's say that those two people gave you two numbers each, or, or a number each. How would you aggregate their two judgments in order to arrive at a judgment of your own? Now, guessing how many coins are in this jar is simply a metaphor for many kinds of judgments that we make about things that are going to happen in the future. You hire a new employee, you're making a judgment about how well he or she is going to do for you. You buy a stock, you're making a judgment about what its price is going to be five years from now. And likewise, there are many, many other routine judgment tasks that we undertake. And asking other people for advice for their estimates is often a very good strategy that we use. So let's go back to the jars. Let's say you ask two people for how many coins they think are in this jar. One of them says 50. The other one says 60. Right? So what's happened here is both of these judges have overpredicted because we now know that the correct answer is 40. One of the judge is off by 10 coins, the other one is off by 20. But let's say you took the average of the two judges. The average would be 55, and the average error, therefore, is 15. It's better than one judge, but not as good as the other judge. Second possibility. One of the judges overpredicts, the other one underpredicts. So let's say, for example, uh, one of them tells you that there are 50 coins in the jar. The second one tells you this looks like 28. Now what's happened is your average is 39, and the error of the average is simply 1. So just to sum up, if you ask people for estimates, one of two things could happen. Thing number one, both of those judges over or underpredict in which case your average is better than one judge, but not as good as the other one. Or one under predicts, one over predicts. If that happens, the average is always going to be better than the, either of the two judges independently. What is that telling us? That's telling us that in many real world cases, it turns out that averaging the opinion of two judges is often better than listening to any advice of any one judge on their own. Let's think through this. If two experts gave you advice, and you were asked, what do I do with the advice, what would most of us do? Here's what we do. We try and figure out which of these two experts is the better expert, and we'd go with that judgment. But the math is telling us that that might actually be a wrong strategy, that in fact you might be better off simply averaging. And in particular, if you set your two experts up such that the dispersion between the two is going to be high, one of them is likely to overpredict, the other one to underpredict, then averaging is always a better strategy than relying on any one judge at the same time. Now, much of the work in this, in this area has been done by two professors at Duke University, Jack Saul uh, and Rick Larrick. And what Jack and, and Rick uh, essentially argue is that while we can prove mathematically that averaging is a dominant strategy, most of us don't believe it is. Most of us believe that averaging results in an average judgment. It's not true. Averaging actually results in a superior judgment. Let's twist the problem around slightly differently. Let's imagine you need advice on a situation. You've got a problem to solve, uh, you've got an estimate to make, you've done your homework, but you want a second opinion. You've got two folks you could go to, Mr. A or Mr. B. 
Mr. A has the same background as you, the same training as you. Mr. B has a different background. Who would you go to? Now it turns out a lot of people would tell you they would rather go to Mr. A who has the same background as they do. But it turns out Mr. B might be a better bet. Why? Because now you and your judge bring different information to the table and therefore if you averaged your two judgments, you are more likely to be accurate. Second scenario. Let's think about the same situation again. You, you need advice. You could go to Miss X or Miss Y. Miss X has seen the same reports that you have seen. Miss Y has had access to a different set of reports. Who do you get advice from? And again, people will tell you that they think they should go to Miss X. After all, we speak the same language, we've seen the same reports. But again, Miss Y is perhaps the better choice because now you bring in more data, more information to the judgment that you're going to make. And that's an interesting puzzle here, is most people have wrong intuitions about who they should get advice from. We think we should get advice from people like us that have seen the same data as us, but in fact we should be doing quite the opposite. Danny Kahneman and Dan Lavallo a number of years back wrote an interesting paper that they call the inside versus the outside views of problems or predictions or organizations. They were studying venture capitalists and, and they would go and ask venture capitalists uh, or, or entrepreneurs in fact, questions such as, uh, what do you think is going to be the likelihood that your company is going to be successful, defined in a given way, five years from now? And let's say the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the entrepreneur said 50%. They would then say, well, but gee, the average success rate in this industry is only 10%. That's the difference between an inside view and an outside view. The outside view collects a different set of information and looks at a different set of perspectives than the inside view. The inside view looks at your capabilities. The outside view looks at what in the environment could go wrong. And the point that Kahneman and Lavalo were making was that again, combining the inside with the outside gives you a much better overall perspective because it lets you access a broader set of information. So, what is all of this telling us? Well, it, it gives us four interesting perspectives in terms of how to think through getting advice. But before we get to those perspectives, there's a common saying that we've heard before many, many times. Two heads are better than one. And that's true. And in fact, it's a very common adage. Many heads are better than two. We've often seen a lot of discussions surrounding phenomena like this one, the wisdom of crowds. The best way of winning a competition where you have a jar like this and you have to guess how many objects are in it is to ask as many people as you can for their estimates, simply average them, and that's likely to be more accurate than any one of their own judgments. So four tips for making better decisions. Tip number one, seek advice from people who are different from you. They could have different training, they could come from a different part of the world, they have seen different experiences or have access to different data. Two, weight your advice at the same level as the judge's advice. Most of us tend to take a second opinion and we, we like it if it confirms what we want, but we discard it if it doesn't. Wrong strategy. Make sure you weight the judge's advice as much as you weigh your own uh, judgment. Three. Get advice from as many judges as you can. The phenomena of the average of two being better is only stronger when you put three, four, five, or more judges. And finally, if you don't have access to advice, if you do not have anybody you can turn to, use yourself as the second person. What do I mean by that? Think about making the same judgment again under a different set of circumstances. For example, if you made the original judgment uh, at work, uh, while you were busy in the middle of a meeting, try and think about the same problem in a different context, while you're relaxed, when you're sitting at home. Uh, and it turns out simply by thinking through the same problem differently, you might come to different judgments, take the average, and that is likely to be better than any one of those two judgments that you made.